All right. Well, good afternoon, um, Mo Shape. Uh, my name is Guy Danhoff, and I am the director of digital media and promotions here. And I'm also a college professor at Missouri Baptist University, uh, which I teach marketing, I teach social media, entrepreneurship. I've also co authored a textbook called Health Fitness Management, of which I specifically write about digital media, but from the standpoint of certainly leveraging things like social media communication and using data analytics kind of as, um, you know, as a brief overview. I've been part of MoShape for over 12 years now, serving in a variety of capacities. And uh, in the last two years prior to this appointment, I served as a board of director overseeing our communications and marketing. And uh, we're really excited to bring this special presentation to you as we have a very special guest. Um, that special guest happens to be Jamie Sparks. Hi, Jamie. Hey, yeah. Thanks for the invite. I appreciate it. Absolutely. As uh, most of you guys know, uh, Jamie happens to be the past president now of Shape America. And uh, we've asked, you know, to do this talk with Jamie from the standpoint of there was a lot that happened during his presidency. And today's discussion is actually going to be about how when he took office last year at Shape Tampa, he had basically told all of Shape America and all the states that he wanted to redefine the community. And what we're going to talk about specifically is how redefining the community theme, how it impacted the health and physical education educators uh, using social media. So that's going to be basically our discussion today, which I'm really excited about. And Jamie, I was just wondering if you could, you know, kind of just dive in, give us an overview of kind of like the differences maybe between your role as president to certainly past president. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity again. And, uh, you know, when I came out of Tampa, um, we had just initially launched Health Moves Minds. Um, I came from state government where the coordinated school health model had kind of evolved into the whole school, whole community, whole child. So there just felt like there's a couple of seismic things happening that I was excited about. And I wanted to make sure that every health and physical education teacher in this country uh, knew about that, was a part of that and, and helping create some momentum. And so that's where the, the concept of redefine our community came from. Um, and, and actually I shared this when I was there in Missouri, but uh, it was also over the last four or five years going from No Child Left Behind into the Every Student Succeeds Act, I would always frequently have everybody stand up and pretend to push a giant rock. And I would always say that rock was that metaphor analogy of what it felt like trying to change education. Right. So I knew with Health Moves Minds and the whole school, whole community, whole child, that we literally were gonna start moving that, that metaphorical rock and redefining and elevating the importance of health and physical education. So that's where the concept uh, really came from. Obviously, uh, redefine our community took on a whole new meaning underneath COVID and a global pandemic, and you know how quickly we've all had to learn, adjust, and uh, change our teaching strategies and approaches because of what we've all encountered. So, you know, Jamie, with that, I, one of the questions I think a lot of people want to ask because we know, especially during your presidency, because you were so visible in social media. I mean, it seemed you had quite a, a tour schedule, if you would, of traveling, advocating, certainly what you did at Speak Out Day, which we're going to talk about. But I was wondering if you could just let people know, Jamie, why do you actually do this? I mean, seriously, if you were to dig deep and figure out why do you do this? Because, look, there's, a, there's an extreme cost to doing this. And I think all of us would like to know what's your why. For me, as far as the, the, the state and national leadership, uh, I, I taught in the classroom for nine years before I went to the Department of Education. And when I got to the Kentucky Department of Ed, I started doing a lot of teaching of teachers, leading professional development, standing in front of my peers. And honestly, my why is that oftentimes people would look to the state and say, well, why don't we have this? Why don't we get this? Why don't we have minutes? Why don't we have funding? And that was sort of my catalyst of saying, you know, I don't have all the answers, but I want to be a part of the solution. Right. And getting engaged in state leadership, getting engaged with my state association was my path that eventually led me to the district and then ultimately the national level. And, and we still have, we've made great progress, but we still have a lot more to do with getting more and more people involved. It's easy to sit back and complain. It's easy to right. be a critic. 
but to actually get in the trenches and do the work necessary to truly move the profession forward, that's what I want to be a part of, and that's my why. So, uh, Jamie, so when I actually got first introduced to you, it was just before Shape Tampa. As you know, I was working behind the scenes as uh, Stephanie Morris had asked me to come on board, um, certainly in kind of a consulting manner at first, where we were talking about, you know, doing an oversight, if you would, and an assessment of the social media. And, you know, obviously I'm a big data analytics guy, but I was wondering if you could frame for people, you know, kind of your view at social media at that time. And then the feedback, you know, that I helped provide, you know, you guys as an executive team, but then how you pivoted even within your own presidency with it. Yeah, you know, it was, and in, you and I have, have had many great conversations on this topic. And I so appreciate what you brought to our community and also to the national board as far as your expertise. And I think that, and that's the reason I'm excited to do this conversation now and, and continue to share that and the importance of social media with our state associations with our districts and then ultimately what we can continue to do and grow better on at the national level. Um, for me, I was, a lot of people um, find this surprising, but I was actually very late to the social media game. Uh, when I started working at the Department of Ed in 2010, I, I was on no social media platforms. Uh, my first social media platform was actually LinkedIn, believe it or not. And huh. I, I did that just sort of because it was very professional and it was sort of, a, and, and, but I noticed my network starting to grow a little bit. And the one catalyst, and I've shared this story with you before, is I, I, I believe in health and be with all, with all that I am. I, I believe that it needs to be prioritized. I need, I, it should be like math, science, and reading. And I was sort of giving my passionate spill to a group one time. And in doing so, I got done. And one of the participants kind of called me out in, in, a, in, a, in the rightful way and said, you know, well, what's your Twitter handle? What's your, I was like, I, I don't do that stuff. You know, I, I don't understand it. It's not for me. And she's like, well, how many people just heard what you said? And I was like, I don't know, 30 people. And she called me out and said, well, that's what social media can do for you. Your voice is limited to the people in your room, but with social media that allows us to amplify our voice. And so that was sort of when it clicked. I wanted to be passionate about advocacy. I wanted to be passionate about health and PE. And so it was really a way that it clicked for me to be able to elevate my reach, our reach of, of, of all the different hats we wear, but it's collective impact. And so it really does amplify our voice. Well, it does. And during that time, just, you know, certainly let our viewers know that with me working behind the scenes for four months, I was working with Joey and your team as we were getting ready for the Shape Tampa 19. And one of the very cool things that came out of it was doing some brand new things, as you know. I mean, it was the first time we'd ever done a live stream on Periscope as every day we went live with, you know, at that time, President Judy Lobianco, uh, which was, again, a first. And then we also produced over 46 pieces of video that was just short video clips, including some from you. That was so, so, so important. We were able to break news. And one of the things we were able to do with the breaking news was, for example, as soon as you took office, you know, I was able to take that stream on behalf of MoShape and get you straight streamlined right to our community. And you had a chance to tell the whole, you know, all the state of Missouri that you were coming to speak specifically about Health Moves Minds as you were speaking at several different things as our keynote and some and the banquet and some other things. But that was huge. It had never been done before. And as you know, when you came in, um, again, from what we did at Shape Tampa, is we kind of scaled down to the state level of what we were doing at Shape Tampa, again, based on the strategy, doing the analysis, finding out what were the key messaging or messages we need to do. And then, of course, you know, you kind of picked up on the, on the whole thing of, you know, looking at, um, looking at using your voice, as you just said. So I have to ask the question, once the gavel was passed and you went out to say, hey, we're going to be redefining our community and also the breaking news is going to be, hey, I'm the advocate for Health Moves Minds. And I was wondering if you could kind of take us back to that day when you first certainly took, you know, the gavel was passed and you're you understanding what you need to do moving forward and using social media. Yeah, you, you know, I, I think that's where having conversations with you uh, over the last couple of years has really helped because I, I was sort of... Um, doing it very organically. I knew it was amplifying the voice, the message, and I knew people that were reading it. 
and seeing it and viewing it that that otherwise you know we wouldn't have access to you know and i think that's the other key part of it is that um i think that was a key part you're so much social media makes us so much more accessible right you're not right. just a, a you build relationships so you meet people but then you connect i you know great example being there in most shape this past convention and the number of friends and colleagues i'm connected with so it wasn't just somebody that that comes in speaks and says something but it's something that you you know it also allows you to stay connected to those that are are doing the same work and the same mission um, in, in new ways. And so, you know, and, and the other cool thing that I love about social media and, and getting to travel the country is, is, you know, I, every meeting I go to now, every single meeting, every time I always say somebody goes from being a, a thumbnail to a real person, right? So you're used to seeing the little image profile. Right. And, and so you get acquainted with people even before you meet them. So it works both ways. You, you get acquainted with people by their voice and by their advocacy and by their work that they're doing and then you get to meet them in person or you meet them in person you get to stay connected because of social media so it works on both sides of the equation and it is such a powerful powerful tool as a result yeah so the next question i want to ask you is you know kind of and again from your perspective again going back to when you first started and if you could kind of frame for us your last 12 months what do you think is the state of the union of social media within the hb community as as when you first took office to what it is today well, I would say a huge part of redefining our community we never saw happening was obviously COVID. And, right. and so I think that when you, when you, when I think back to March, right before when we were all planning to go to Salt Lake city and national convention, right. I think, you know, the way I see it, this is very anecdotal, but uh, our movers and shakers in this profession are already connected on social media. Um, they're, they, I, you know, the way I say it, like when I left the classroom in 2009, 2010, I, I could sit back and complain and say, hey, I don't get professional development. I don't, my, t my school doesn't support me. I don't have connections. And, and that piece has really evolved. And, and as I got into social media, I would call other teachers out on that aspect and say, if you're not connected and professionally growing, you need to look in the mirror. You can't blame your right. superintendent now. You can't blame, it may not be paid PD, but there are ways to connect with people that, that are, that are movers and shakers. And so, um, that aspect has certainly changed. And so fast forward to COVID, all of our well-connected teachers, right, are, 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 are doing those things. They're on their different platforms. They're sharing their practices. They're learning from others and their best practices. But what happened under COVID is it forced everybody to virtual learning. And so right. I think that learning curve was a whole lot less for those that were already connected. And none of this has been, I'm not saying it's made it easy for anybody to navigate, but for those that were already connected and had their networks, uh, the, the, the transition was a whole lot more smooth than those teachers that had never been engaged on Twitter, Facebook, Zoom, whatever the platform. Um, right. And so now I think we have this tremendous opportunity to think about our strategy, to think about the message we're sending out and to really elevate it. Because the other thing is right now there's so much noise, right? And that's the one thing that most shape does a great job of because you have strategy with your social media, you have thousands of teachers that know they can look to what you're saying when you're saying it and know that it's relative where if you're just on, you know, and even, I mean, as great as Facebook is, you know, some of those things that people are saying, teaching, saying authentic and valid, reliable sources of information. I think that's the, the thing that state associations and shape America really bring to the table and elevate right now. Yeah, ex exactly. And I appreciate you saying that about our state. And I'm going to answer this question um, because it's, it's, and you know this because you've asked it of us several times when people ask, how does MoShape do what it does, right, in terms of social media? And one of our tenets is this, that we believe that brand is built where the attention is. In other words, if you're not creating attention, to your point, how can you navigate your way to cut through all the clutter? And that actually led to when you came to us in November at our convention that we knew a few things. We knew, A, you're gonna give our keynote, okay? So we decided to stream it live. What we saw is we had close to 500 people in the room and we had triple the amount of people that saw it virtually. So in some ways you might already say that we were doing some virtual um, you know, uh, convention even back when you were here. We streamed a total of 11 different events and you were part of like six of them 
as like you and Yasmin did a beautiful session on rolling out what is Health Moves Minds. You also gave us an inspirational talk during our awards banquet. Jamie, we leveraged the fact that you came all the way down from certainly, I know Kentucky, but representing the national office to be with us. And we knew that we wanted to amplify your message to let our state know that we are working side by side. We are locking arms together so that people can see the collective good and collective genius of what we're trying to do to push these key initiatives. And I wanted to kind of get your reaction to the fact that by doing that, we had 10 times the engagement rate from when you were here on social media, from what we did the year before. We also had, again, three times the views in terms of reaching a much bigger audience because we could use social media. And I wanted the viewers to hear from your perspective because you were obviously being filmed. You know, you saw all this stuff blowing up around you. Kind of give us your reaction to that. Well, you know, I, again, I think that's the reason it makes a great tool, especially you, know, you guys do such a good job with the video components. And I think that's something we can always grow a little bit more. And, and, and again, it goes back to the fact of, in our state associations, how many people are members, how many are we engaging, and how many get to be there? And so that's the other thing it does, right? It creates excitement when you're bringing in speakers and national presenters and people, but, but we also realize that the equity issue that not everybody can be there. So the opportunity right. to, to share that impact is, is you know, and, and that's what you, when you go, you walk around Mo Shape and you talk in any state conference, the people that come back year after year, they've experienced that personal growth. They've experienced that passion and commitment of like-minded people that help to raise their own bar and their professional growth plans. And so, you know, social media is a way that you, you give people a glimpse in to why right. those are so impactful. And, and you guys have some great energy there. And, and so that I think, you know, the ability to just show some highlights of that is a great right. promotion marketing piece to allow others that couldn't be there for whatever reason, maybe, maybe some, you know, didn't have the means to be and maybe others now will, will find the means because I think that's oftentimes what we hear from so many of our people that come back year after year is we'll, 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 we'll do whatever it takes to get there again, because that's how impactful it is to our career. So I want to throw this out to you and have you react to it. You've heard me say this to you before. I certainly tweeted probably almost monthly, and that is this. Advocacy is about culture. It's not about marketing nor technology. I was wondering if you could respond to that. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, goes, it goes twofold, right, with, with, with advocacy. It, it's got to be in its purest sense, and I think right. that's that, that organic piece of, uh, I, I, to me, that's what sets, I, I struggle with that in some ways because I, it's my personal passion, advocacy is. Right. But at the same time, I realize we've made progress, but we still have so far to go. And, and, and that's where I think the word can be amplified on such a bigger stage in that, um, if, if we all participated in it and, and, and we're starting to see some major, major things happening, right? Because now all of a sudden, so I, I guess what I would say is the advocacy is always most effective to your point. Right. When it's done in its purest form, you build the relationship, you build the network Correct. where now what we see is we're people trying to advocate after the fact when they're wanting to cut my job or when they're eliminating my position, now I'm going to show up and advocate. And oftentimes, unfortunately, that's too late. And so if we can learn to grow collectively through all of our different tools, between social media, between our, our uh, you know, website, between building relationships, right? That, you know, that's the critical part of advocacy social media is, is building its, its relationships, right? And, yep. and fostering those relationships. And, and I think we're seeing why that's even more important now because of what we're facing across the country in budget cuts and shortfalls and things like that. Right, so I'm gonna pivot on you for just a second. That's where we get to have a little fun, certainly with our state. Um, and it's not at your expense, but I think it's an insight because as I just said, advocacy is about culture. At MoShape, honestly, we've really looked at any way we can share a story, how unique it might be. But I kind of ask the question, everyone wants to know what impelled you when you came to see us, how did this whole thing get started with the hashtag 
Mo tattoo for sparks. We all want to know what, what in the world compelled you to want to go there. And don't get me wrong, we know your passion for advocacy, but my man, that has taken it, as some would say, to the extremes. And I was wondering if you could kind of give us, you know, some of the behind the scenes, if you would, or what you were thinking when you decided to kick off that campaign and let us blow it up all over our social media. Yeah, so, you know, interesting enough, it, it, uh, you, you all, again, you have the right pieces in play. I was actually in North Carolina uh, in the middle of October, and I keynoted the uh, North Carolina State Conference, and that's where I made the official announcement. We'd been on a board call a week or two before that, and we were talking about the fall campaign for Health Moves Minds. Uh, there was going to be an incentive for however many schools signed up. There was one free registration to national. So that was Shape America's incentive. And so as they were rolling this out and Yasmin and Stephanie and other people were talking about, you know, really engaging states in enrollment, I was like, I, I got to, let me, let me, I, I want to raise the, so I, I, this was a text, it started in a text message. I texted Kim Ballard and Stephanie Morris and Judy Lobianco. We were all in a, a small group text and I said, I've never had a tattoo, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should do a Health Moves Minds tattoo. And somehow it morphed into a state incentive of the first three states to reach. And I actually had a teacher here in Kentucky that did a phenomenal job as an early implementer of Health Moves Minds. And I'll give Todd Crumbacker credit. He was the one that, because the one big shift in, in um, Health Moves Minds is that it's not on individual rewards, but rather right. on, on more healthy, holistic school-wide classroom award. So he created a system where when, instead of individual kids raising money, it was, a, a, it was a thermometer basically. And each grade level had a different word to spell. So he, you know, like, you know, they were supposed to spell a kind at kindergarten. So for every $10, they would earn a letter. And so it was kind of a way to create classroom incentives. So I basically took that same concept from Todd. And so the initial incentive for Health Moves Minds and the tattoo was the first state to successfully spell Health Moves Minds. So that was 10 schools signed up, you earn a letter. So but I, I, I announced that in North Carolina. I think I went to another state or two before I came there in about the middle of November, early November. Right. And so a couple of states I'd been talking about it, promoting it, but you guys, I have to give Christy or Kyle or somebody credit or you, I don't know who did the, I, the hashtag Mo tattoo for sparks was, yep. was completely Mo shape. And then uh, you also got the uh, picture of my calf and, and, and superimposed the picture on there. So that really helped to pick up steam, but it was just, you all, I put the concept out there 20, 30 days before every state had the same challenge, but I, I think you guys really took the tools and the leaders you have in place and took it and ran with it. And obviously we're very successful in that campaign. <laughs> well, obviously, so I want to give a little behind the scenes on this, guys, that you may not know. To Jamie's point, uh, I did ask um, our um, future professionals, President Juan at the time, I said, Juan, I have a special request. I need you to get a shot of Jamie's calf, but you can't let him know you're taking it. Get it to me. And because when you started announcing this, like, everyone was kind of confused about are you getting the full tattoo where it says health moves minds with symbols and the words so when i got the logo i put it on your calf during our convention for the shock value and oh my gosh it, it created a lot of chatter i know your phone was blowing up and we knew all along you were just going to get the symbols themselves but you got to admit again using social media to create that attention the best part is it wasn't like so much the attention was designed to you as it was again on health moves minds and that's one of the again the tricks of or the strategies that we use at MoShape to create that attention so we're building the brand in this case trying to build um <laughs> health moves minds but you have to admit give us your reaction when you saw that when we had that thing plastered on your cap yeah it was it, you know it, it actually because it was sort of an organic campaign as far as um, I think, you know, it definitely created some, some excitement and some buzz around, is he really going to do this, especially for somebody that, that had no tattoos, right? I had, right. I'd never had a tattoo before. And so it really has created a lot of personal conversations around, well, what possessed you to do this? And, what, and, 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 you know, it's simply when you talk to the Christie's and the Kyle's of the world and you hear firsthand what this program's done for kids, 
that that was sort of you know why I knew I wanted this to be a lasting memory of my presidency. It certainly has created an interesting campaign. Uh, but the interesting thing that came from the picture that you all shared out and tweeted is is then then it suddenly became everybody wanted their own little state iterations of the tattoo. Like we of want course. the arch on there. We want the. I'm like, no, no, my commitment is the three symbols of Elmer's fine. So I had to start clarifying a little bit more after that. Well, that's, again, look, we're just trying to create headlines and get excitement. So now let's, let's fast forward. You left our convention, obviously had a huge impact. And now all of a sudden you got to tell us, because I never have asked you this question, but what was it like in February once we hit that goal of, I think, 160 schools, you made the announcement, right? And you were now coming to our state to get the tattoo, your very first one. I know Anna and that whole um, uh, Health Moves Minds team went through all kinds of precautions to find the right tattoo place, because I know that was a concern, let alone, and then of course, you know me, I thought it was an amazing opportunity to let the whole country know, if you're gonna go this far and you got some literal skin in the game, what if we live stream this thing? Mm -hmm. What was it like when <laughs> you had a call, Stephanie and Judy and everyone, you know, back at the at the corporate office, if you would, that we're going to live stream this event? Yeah, that, you know, that definitely took it to a whole nother level, right? And especially again, somebody, I, I mean, I could have cried in great pain the whole time. Who knows what's going to happen? I've never had a tattoo before. Uh, so that, that big unknown factor, but actually it helped to keep me focused. People ask me, well, what was it like? And it, it really, uh, having you there and just having the conversation, it really right. did keep me distracted. And it was, a, it was a super fun way to promote it and, and do those things. And, and of course, you know, getting there ended up being a, quite a challenge, right? It, it uh, again, there's, there's all sorts of behind the, the, seen stories that that those have been that have been a part of it but you know it came a major snowstorm i actually was in atlanta um for the national esea conference and it just presented and right. i actually got an earlier flight out that morning i called the airport because i was supposed to land right in the middle of the snowstorm in st louis yeah um so i actually i was so committed to making sure it happened that i uh I actually got an earlier flight out to get in, and uh, we st the, the storm didn't hit as bad as we thought, but it certainly kept other people from traveling and uh, things like that. But uh, but we, we made sure it happened, and uh, uh, despite uh, the circumstances, and, and it was fun to appreciate Courtney. It was her brother. Uh, Courtney's yeah. a teacher there in, in Mo Shape, and uh, she uh, it was her brother that volunteered the services, and so that made it a, 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 a nice – natural connection as well and uh it was great for for the turnout we have and, and getting to share that so i got a couple of insights to share with our viewers first of all jamie i want you to know that that content which by the way you guys can go see if you go to the most shape twitter handle or our facebook page you will see our throwback thursday from last thursday it was actually we put that broadcast out again so everyone could see it because we're referencing obviously right now um, and by the way, Jamie, did you realize that that was the second most viewed content we'd ever put out as Mo Shape ever? The only one that's topped it was the year earlier when Stephanie Morris came in and we went one on one with her and Tom Lowry on that interview. That one reached over 2,400 views where she had a chance to really talk about, you know, what, what she was going to do as, as taking over as president, right? That kind of thing. But yours has now gone over 1,400 views, and shockingly enough, we had over 100 live viewers. So this was quite an event, but again, I know it sounds really weird to say, hey, we're going to stream this live in a tattoo parlor, but what you guys don't know is Anna actually strapped you up with a heart rate monitor as we talked before <laughs> we went live. If your heart rate was over 120, I wasn't going to ask you any questions because we know that you're fighting the pain or whatever, but if you got under 100, we kind of knew that was, you know, something that we were going to use. Remember that? <laughs> it is. It is. There you go. And I know it's a weird way to say this, but guys, we actually took a lot of precautions in having some exit strategies, if you would, if you did go into pain or something or how to cut the feed. <laughs> Probably the best thing we did is I watched this thing now about five times. Jamie, that was 30 minutes of content. It was the second most viewed. And it just goes to show everyone viewing that, guys, don't get caught up in length of content. If it's adding value to your community, then if it takes a half hour like it did with what you went through, 
the whole time we were on focus. It wasn't just about you because we had Kyle there. Sure. We had Tom Lowry there. Laura was there. Anna was there. Um, we even talked to Christy via Zoom or via Yeah, we talked to uh, Christy FaceTime. via, via FaceTime. FaceTime even. Mm -hmm. But the whole point was is that we were kind of shuffling and we knew ahead of time because we talked about it that the main thing was to talk about health moves minds on various perspectives. And we even opened up, you'll appreciate this, we even opened up that people could message us questions directly to you. And it was kind of funny, your Kentucky folks, so they were questioning, but it's out there live, guys. You can see it. It's archived. It's out there. Let's go back a few days, but it's really cool. So anyways, I just wanted you to know what an amazing event that was that turned into, again, advocating for Health Moves Mind, despite the craziest of crazy of where the location was actually being filmed from. But again, I think that it speaks to the volume of, again, what I keep saying, brand is built where the attention is. We saw it as an opportunity as a state. Yes, was it extreme? Yes, I can promise you probably a year ago, there would be no one that would have approved anything like this. <laughs> yeah. But we're in different times. So speaking of that, now let's kind of let's kind of trend to after that happens, now you're shifting into, which is why I've been blowing up your tie your custom made tie, by the way. So if you guys want to see that, just go check the promotion. I put his classic tie out custom made, uh, hand, you know, specifically for Speak Out Day. And again, kind of talk us through Speak Out Day because Jamie, something significant happened. It was the first time in all our history that Speak Out Day, our hashtag was trending nationally. That was a first. Yeah, you know, and again, it, it connects the two, you know, the advocacy piece of that. And, you know, and, and, that, and that was, and that's another key reason why a number of years ago, as I saw that, you know, in order to create change policy, change had to accompany that. And, and the reality is, I talk, talk to, any, think about your, your own health and PE career right now. There's a high, high likelihood that the person you answer to or that creates policy that influences your job has a Twitter account and most people follow their own Twitter account. And, and I know our legislators on the Hill all run their own Twitter accounts or majority of them do. Um, and same thing for your superintendent, same thing for your principal. Right. And so um, the ability to, to use that in a meaningful way, um, you know, and to have 44, 46 states represented coming using the same hashtag. But the most important thing is, you know, each state may, send one person or three or five or however many the state can afford to send to DC. But if there's an army back home in your home state, continuing to amplify that message, um, I challenge my board members all the time. I serve as Kentucky's executive director and we do challenges, social media challenges all the time. And we, in fact, we had a, a complete social media advocacy week where we divided our board up into teams and each of us had a team uh, representative of board members and so we had challenges to complete every day and amplifying our voice through our social media and so anything you can do with your board to, to help uh, do that and and when you have that many states coming together but again it's not just the people there right that's the, that's the power of social correct, media it's correct. the people that are back home that you, you are, again to your point a number of years ago well so-and-so is going to go do that job well now even though you're not there, it's collectively all of our jobs because, right. you know, think about, think about what happens on your own social media feed. If you get likes or you get shares, what's, what do you do? It draws your attention. So if you're Senator so-and-so and one person retweets you versus 50 people retweet you, it's going to get your attention. And so uh, understanding the value of that. And, and again, we've made progress. But I, I, I guarantee you, most shape members could have done a better job on speak out day, just like Kentucky members could have done a better job. So we've made progress, but we can still do better. Absolutely. So here we are, Jamie, at this point, we had, there's such a high going on. And of course, you know, we were still buzzing from shape Tampa. I mean, everyone then was shifting our focus to Salt Lake City, which we thought was just going to be the most amazing thing after what had just happened. Speak out day, you know, we're coming around the curve, everyone's posting, you know, all about Salt Lake City. Everyone's excited about presenting and all going and, you know, just wanting to have this great time and build, you know, and, and really build together the HPE community. And then all of a sudden, that something that no one could have ever seen is COVID. And then you guys have to make the announcement, like everyone else, that you had to cancel 
shape Salt Lake City. And at that point, I was, well, I was wondering if you could share with us, I'm asking you kind of a, an intimate question here. What were you thinking at this moment, especially once all the states were going to, well, most of the states were going to the stuck at home order. And that's when I know you decided you, your uh, little pep talks, but walk us through as a leader, again, knowing you have social media, and the role that you now know that you were kind of thrown into in some ways because you are a president, kind of give us some of the thought process at that time. So the, the timing to that, um, speak out day. So I'll back up to speak out day because as, as we, we continue to have speak out day this year and there was some uncertainty, we, we had, did have some members. Um, so you got to realize, I mean, how rapidly things changed um, within, you know, day by day, it was changing rapidly. Right. Um, so we did have a few members that didn't make speak out day this year because travel things had started to tighten up a little bit in districts, but that was so early enough. So when we were there for speak out day, all we knew about COVID at that point for the most part was let's not shake hands. And that's really where the that's world true. Was. you guys are doing the elbow thing. Yeah. And, um, and so as we came off by the time we, we, you go in on one day, you do a training the next day you go on the hill. And by the time we came off the hill, um, and the buses left that evening, uh, that was the last day that the Capitol Visitor Center was open. So the Senate office closed down the next day. So that's how rapidly it evolved in a two-day period where they closed it to visitors. So we obviously were already having conversations, monitoring Salt Lake City, talking to local officials. And then, you know, I think the hardest thing for, for me as president at that time and for the organization was when you look at an event that, that brings in four or 5,000 people and you have a contract that large with, with so many contract negotiations, there's a lot of factors. There are a lot of factors. And so, you know, it, it, it you know, and it's tough. It, so the, I'll say this right now about social media. The great thing about social media is everybody has a voice. The bad thing about social media is everybody has a voice. Right. Sometimes that comes with uninformed uh, opinions not having all the facts, but that allows people to amplify what they say, regardless of, of what the scenario is. And so when you elect people to places of leadership, they have to take in the whole picture and you have to take in all the scenarios. And that's exactly what our states are facing right now, as you, right. as you look to this fall. But back in March, we were, you know, unprecedented times. I, I can't tell you how many times that phrase was iterated. This is unprecedented and, right. and we'd never seen anything like this. And so the biggest challenge we faced for Salt Lake City was there were so many unknowns and we were just far enough out ahead at the end of April that states and cities started doing two week things, four week things, six weeks, but we were like seven and a half, eight weeks. Right. And, and we knew what was the best decision, but we had other factors to take into consideration in order to do what was best for the association in the big picture. And so just being patient with that and talking through that and with the board, I think Nori uh, with, with Shape America staff and, and Stephanie's team just does such an amazing job of, of having eyes and ears close to the ground and, and working with those local officials. And, and we made that decision, obviously. And there, you know, a lot of, again, you look back on it now, you say, oh, of course you're going to do that. But there was, you didn't know from March into whenever. Right. Uh, that's, that's how rapidly things change day by day. And here we are in June, and there's a lot of more unknowns because when we look at the data, we're seeing more trends now than we were in March. So, you know, right. people have big decisions to make and what, what it's going to mean for school reopening and fall events and things like that. So tell us about the impact you felt, though, keeping us together with your pedal pep talks. That was, again, a first. You know, and, and, and this thing has iterated so many different ways. And, and, you know, to me, that was a way that, you know, some people, you know, ask me, well, you know, how, what, you know, is your ears president, your convention's canceled. But the pedal pep talks was just sort of a way of what's going on is so much bigger than any personal professional experience. And it was uh, a way for me to just put positive vibes up in the world leading. I, I I didn't, and when I started doing, I actually, I just hopped on the stationary bike one day for my own sanity, and <laughs> I turned on Twitter and, and Facebook Live and just kind of started chatting, and I think it was Dan Tennyson from Indiana that commented, again, you know, the power of social media, so there's Dan from Indiana and says, that's a great pedal pep talk, and hashtag pedal pep talk was born, yeah. and uh, that's how organic things happen, and, 
and so it was it was a way to just stay very positive to stay very focused um you know and i think that was the cool you know that's what's unfortunate we see now guys is i, I remember seeing humanity join together right we're facing yep. the unknown we don't know how to respond to this we don't know and and the the first 30 40 days you didn't see the political nonsense you do now and now, now here we are this many days out we've lost this many hundred thousand Americans and countless numbers and, and you still got some people are saying like you know this is fake it's a ho like that's when you realize the need for health literacy in our society and to right. understand uh, it's, it's just fascinating to see how political taking care of your brothers and sisters has become you know and that's right and that's and that's what made pedal pep talks hard to continue is because it was really trying to be apolitical and put a positive vibe out there and stay focused right. on things and and i've had a couple of people say well we, you're going to bring those back and I've, I've i'm contemplating it but uh you know it was it was it was a good thing for a bit and it certainly was a good way to lead up to to what would have been salt lake city it was very meaningful and then that week, we still did a lot of things that Salt Lake City week that that would have had, you know, we still announced a lot of our award winners. We still had our board meetings. We still did a lot of announcements. So that week got very busy. So I really appreciate the opportunity to, to close out my presidency with, yep. the, with the Pedal Pep Talks. Well, with the Pedal Pep Talk, I'll be honest with you, as a state, we felt like we wanted to do something, especially when the stuck at home order came. I mean, everyone was just flipping out. I mean, we were tuning into you guys to your pedal pet talk a lot. Just again, trying to process, trying to get this down. Obviously, we're being asked to do all kinds of things as educators, going on Zoom, going from face to face, you know, into the virtual. I mean, it was such a disruption that finally, you know, I over a weekend, you know, from our um, I call them SEAL Team Six, because <laughs> Christy Berry, Kyle. And Anna and 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 Terry Garner. I mean that that group right there, Jamie. They are hardcore. They wanted to do something, and they came up with this whole notion. What about spread, spreading positivity and off your pep talk and kindness? And I'll never forget how this happened. I'll let you viewers know that you know we just thought about just doing this as a state thing. It was real simple. We were going to have this hashtag um, called Chalk Your Walk. You know, and this was just a way to bring our community together, especially like in our state. The weather finally broke because during spring break it was horrible but the weather finally broke where people could go outside at least walk in their neighborhood social distancing of course and then came up the notion of, of doing this and by doing this talk your walk i re i can remember we were contacting you i think it was close to 11 at night the day before your puddle pet talk and all we asked for not even your your total support we just wanted you to make a public service announcement of what we were doing and then, Jamie, you can take us from there because you were keeping the scorecard that would start out as a state thing. You can report what happened then because this truly, in a 48-hour period, was totally organic. And I do want to point this out, guys. If it wasn't for COVID, I can promise you what we tried to do with um, Chalk Your Walk probably would have taken at least two to three months to get approved. Mm -hmm. Today, it's all changed. And that was a huge thing that we did. So I was wondering if you could take us through from your perspective, as you're seeing all this action and activity from your end, keeping track in the scorecard with the states, as well as other countries eventually, as well as what we were doing in terms of Moshe, every time someone would post, we were given those attaboys or encouragement, or if you were in Montana, you were shoveling your driveway, we're mm -hmm. still saying, yeah, way to go, way to participate, or if you're in Seattle where it always rains, can't go outside and you're doing it on your whiteboards. I was wondering if you could speak to that. Yeah, you know, well, and I'll point out now because I failed to mention something, but I, my second tattoo was healing right during this time too. So I didn't get my second health moves minds tattoo in Kentucky. So I'll give Kentucky a shout out because we did talk about on some earlier calls. There you go. Competitive. There you go. Here's my Kentucky. So, uh, you know, but anything we can do to lift up health moves minds and it fits yeah. right into what the curriculum was. And so I think it was Anna that messaged me late one night after you guys had talked and said, hey, can you can you give this a shout out or can you give it some mention? And I think somebody yeah. sent me like draft up and and yeah and in fact I use that as my Zoom virtual background sometimes, uh, the health moves minds in 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 chalk, and and so yeah I just sort of again that's the nice thing about the 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 the, the opportunities with social media, um, is to amplify your voice and that is certainly a a cool project that quickly amplified 
Um, and and then as 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 I gave it a shout out, I think on the pedal pep talk the next day, and and tweeted out and retweeted some of the stuff Mo Shape pushed out. I, I quickly noticed, like I, I in my head, I started doing this virtual map of like, well, well, these are, <laughs> and, and so I was like, well, I'm seeing this, and so I just took to uh, to a program and started tracking it, and then I don't remember what our total tally count was, but we we got pretty close to to all 50 states in the and a couple of days that that really campaign really hit. And um, it, it, it was cool to see that kind of spread. And then I think, I think the other, you know, people started tagging other people on social yeah. media and Facebook saying, get your chalk out. And then we, even, as you said, we've seen some creative things. Yeah. Uh, well, it's raining, but I did it on a window or I wrote a right. message on a board. And uh, so, you know, and again, that was kind of the gist is just putting positive messages out there to your community. And what was so beautiful about that, again, it just goes to show to everyone the power of social media. It brought us together. It was building our community. We were one voice yeah. because we're all in this together. That was the other hashtag, all in this together. I mean, this was very strategic. Yeah. And we also want to do it to your point, Jamie, because we wanted to also continue to support health moves mind because it's been so successful in our state and has helped us on many levels so you know we just thank you so much we literally came to you at the 11th hour could you just maybe just mention it and the cool part was again from our perspective is we saw what you did in that meeting later that day we took a picture of our our post that still it's it's the post where we put shape america and we put chalk your walk and our logo on all in chalk and that was our promotion because we had no time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we are and we're doing this and to see you do that. And the coolest part was seeing so many people from all over the country. I think the total was 44 states and yes, three countries. Unprecedented. I'll be honest with you. When I write the fourth edition, Chalk Your Walk is going in to illustrate a lot of key teaching points. Mm -hmm. A great case study for people who want to understand advocacy using social media as we did. So. With that, I kind of want to, as we're starting to kind of wrap up here, I want to kind of pivot to some other initiatives that have happened. Um, you know, as you know, Laura Beckman very well, you know, and, and, and she's such a great advocate on all the things that she does, certainly with the WISC model and some other initiatives. And during this time, you know, Laura had just launched um, Missouri Healthy Schools, and then she got me involved to help launch the Missouri Healthy Kids Twitter handle so that we could advocate. And this is a great example of, again, how things have shifted and changed. We partnered with the Missouri PTA and realized there was two big initiatives that the parents wanted to see why kids were stuck at home. And that was, hey, could you talk to us about snacks and about recess? And that is where we launched for eight weeks, you know, up until school ended. We were going live every single week streaming these two shows called Suck at Home Recess, Suck at Home Snacks. And eventually the, the recess show is a lot of you guys probably know have seen the show is by Spaker Spot. And the other one has been done by Missouri's very own state nutritionist and Lisa Farmer. And when we were running those shows, um, Laura was working behind the scenes and the CDC has funded now. Um, and Laura can tell you about the specifics of the grant, but we were given like a grant, additional grant, or she was, so that we can continue with that type of content. And on top of it, it was endorsed by our very own governor in Missouri, Parson, to endorse this as we do these summer shows. And I can sit, tell you that both shows launched last week and both shows have received over 1,000 viewers each. I was wondering if, you know, maybe if you can kind of, you know, comment and again of how the power of social media of creating content or trying to solve needs that people have questions and answers to. Well, you know, I, I think the biggest concern I would say my full time job is is with ETR and I serve as their school health program manager. And one of the biggest concerns I have that, that has happened under COVID is because obviously screen time has increased and other things. And that's to be expected as people are, are getting more information via a lot of different channels. But I can't stress again from a health education perspective accessing valid and reliable sources of information right. so to create a social media channel aimed specifically at giving kids and families and communities um, valid and reliable sources of nutrition information of physical activity it's so so critical because you see a lot of things that that people will hit and share and spread 
and that's again there that's the that's the other side of social media is how often that kind of stuff that that doesn't quote that's not based on science or based on research that doesn't quote a source in when it's spreading out and you know it, that skill is so critical right now so the fact that missouri, missouri how do you all say it missourians missourians yeah Did I get that, right? yeah, that works <laughs> missourians that they have a place that they can go to that they know right. this this is a trusted source of information that's that's so critical because um you know anybody can put anything out on social media and and right. so um, having those valid and reliable uh, is, is such a huge asset to to have at your disposal as a tool. Yeah, and Jamie, with that, you know, uh, we've been aligning with the WISC model as we create the content, certainly with, with all the standards, including now the new reentry standards. So Shape America, we've been paying very close attention and resources. So if there's a, even a week-to-week -week episode that we got to pivot, we're going to do that. So again, we're, we're, we're social listening to seeing what's going on around us, but we are trying to become a trusted source and here's one major reason did you know as you alluded to youtube watching has gone to an all-time high all-time high what's interesting when you break down i looked at the data recently 30 percent are looking for um cooking options like they're literally going for cooking they want to learn more about cooking we want to fill that space of, of for schools that healthy options whether it's you know a meal or it's a snack so that's one of the things that we're looking to do. And secondly, then, of course, the other one is like do it yourself. What are some of the do it yourself things you can do? Well, with physical activity, Spaker Spot is highly creative in showing all these different things that you can do to keep kids engaged and physically active, even while doing the physical or social distancing, you know, as each state, you know, has those different regulations. So it's been a huge thing for us to be able to do this. Again, the power is because we could deliver on the social media platform, in our case, you know, we mainly use Periscope to do this, but it's been powerful in terms of our ability to advocate and then getting the support of MoShape. Again, we're locking, you know, arms on this thing or locking hands in co in connection with each other, as well as with the Missouri PTA and even Shape America before we go live in every episode. So again, it's that partnership that you were talking about, building those relationships and trying to advocate any way we can to meet the needs of our community so with that um it comes a time to show jamie i just got to tell you something that i really feel bad that we never got a chance to have this talk at salt lake city because one of the questions that you saw me ask on judy lobianco's last day in office before the gavel was passed i'm gonna have to ask you the same question could you characterize for everyone right now your legacy as Shape America president? You know, um, legacy is a big word, and that's a word that kind of would scare anybody, right? And um, I, I, but but it sort of does go back to the essence of what I what I hope was my theme uh, was the reason behind the tattoos, um, right. and, and I truly hope. Um, 10, 20 years from now and well into the future, um, we're talking about what a pivotal moment Health Moves Minds was in 2019, 2020. Right. Um, you talk to anybody that's been a leader in a state association, it's, it's funny. I'll tell a Kentucky story to, to tell the, the specific shape apron story. You go to uh, any of the, you know, 95% of the world's bourbons produced here in Kentucky, and you go to every distillery, they each have a different story of how bourbon started, right? Everybody has their own iteration of how they, and it's the same with Jump Rope for Heart in our profession. Every state has a different iteration of how they were the one that started, and it usually has something to do with a breakfast and a peanut butter sandwich and so-and-so talking to somebody. So, but the essence of that is, it started very organically, right? Uh, the, yep. the essence of, of Jump Rope for Heart. And it was a great program and American Heart Association is still a wonderful organization. But as we look at how things changed over time and how PE and health were, were under emphasized and not appropriately funded, it, it came that time and place when it was time for us to represent our profession and say, 
we've got to do something to fundamentally change the course and the direction that we're on. So the fact that schools can now earn up to 60% of their money back to them, they're the ones right. doing the work. They should get the money. The states get three times as much as they did in the old agreement. States operate on a shoestring budget and, and what we do and how we do our work and oftentimes are 100% volunteer driven. Most states don't have a paid staff person or a, at least a full-time paid staff person. So there are things that needed to change for classroom teachers. There are things right. that needed to change for our state associations and leadership to help support them financially. And I, with all that I am, believe that Health Moves Minds is that huge pivotal piece. So um, I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. It has nothing to do with, I didn't mind to have skin in the game, but uh, it was an opportune time for, for us to have a very bold and courageous conversation about the direction we wanted this profession to go. And I believe we truly have, have started down that path in, in an amazing way. And thanks to states like the work that you all have done, the work that there, there are states that certainly led this way. Kentucky and Missouri will forever be recognized as the two tattoo states. So I'll take pride in that. Uh, but, uh, you know, there's other states and other leaders that have done a great job. And I think this next year is going to be even a bigger impact as we think about, I took just a second earlier on a call with my staff with ETR and, and these SEL lessons for shape America are absolutely free for any school. The fundraising part is completely optional. Um, I think when schools look at it, they'll make that choice because it's a no brainer. It's made by teachers right. for teachers, but the SEL component that embeds that into health and physical education is so critical. I, I have three kids. One's going to be in middle, one's going to be in high school and my son's going to be a senior. I cannot fathom what it feels like to be a student in America right now. Mm -hmm. If you think about what the last day of instruction was like in a public school in this country to what the next day, whenever that next day is, not only between COVID and racial injustices and whatever's going to happen between now and that time, I, I can't fathom what's on a child's shoulders right now. Right. If we go back and we focus on math and reading like we have for the last three decades, we're going to fail our society and our culture. If there's ever a more time that health and PE and the, the skills that come from that have to be elevated, it's the world we're about to go into. And I believe Health Moves Minds uniquely positions us to do just that. Well, and I think to go along with that, Jamie, that again, and hopefully this will, you know, inspire a little more maybe activity on the social media side to realizing even a simple retweet does go a long way. And mm -hmm. certainly, you know, showing your support for something, um, especially along those lines. And, and to your point also, I just cannot help but think about the WISC model aligning with what you just said mm -hmm. as we move forward more and more. Because I know our state is advocating very heavily for that. Obviously, you've seen some of the interviews I've done with Dr. Ashley Krause, who the CEC is appointed as our spokesperson for Missouri, as we're just trying to get more conversations started along those lines. And uh, Jamie, we are so appreciative as a state, the investment you've made with us on so many different levels. You know, you have redefined our community. You've given us a bigger picture. And I can say this. I know, I know it started with Stephanie. I mean, she, she was, you know, the first one that gave us that, that, you know, that blip. But it was definitely echoed strongly when you took office and you came to see us. Because we, I truly can say this, that maybe in the past, we now have become a state that advocates in real time. We're no longer just about a convention-driven, you know, um, society any longer. In fact, because of that shift, Tom Lowry, our executive director, always tells us, as he just said in this last board of directors meeting last week, I think we've increased uh, over a thousand um, members of our society now, which has doubled in like the last six months. I got to believe a lot of it has to do with how we're advocating, how we're stepping up to the plate, and we're trying to solve some real problems in real time because, to your point about COVID and have this kind of relationship with you and certainly with Shape America and everyone involved. It, it, it's, it has been a, a seismic shift for us that we are so proud of. And if people are wondering, you know, what's the shift been? Well, I think hopefully some of the stories that we shared certainly illustrates to some things of how we work together during this journey together during your presidency. And uh, as we wrap up the show, I gotta ask you this last thing because I have not asked this before either. Uh, it's not really a put you on the spot thing, but it's just kind of a fun reaction. 
what did you think as we just posted this again on Sunday, but we made a video for you. And do you know how hard it is to book Judy Lobianco? <laughs> I mean, she's like become a Facebook sensation. I, I think she might even be up for a Grammy award. I don't know, or something. But I got to tell you something. When a couple people on our team decided to write this song, and we then, you know, sought after Judy would have to be the one that could sing it and play it. And then all the support with all the modern technology, with all the video passing, you know, the, the health moves minds and all the different, you know, artifacts. I'd like to ask your reaction of what it meant the first time you saw it. You know, I, I'm, I'm getting sort of emotional just thinking about it now as you were prompting the question. And, and that tells you a lot um, uh, about um, all the, the work and the thoughtfulness that, that, that really embodies what, what we're trying to say with kindness and mindfulness and, and social emotional learning. And, and, you know, it, it, to your question earlier, what was it like, you know, so I, I really didn't dwell on not, I knew I was going to, I miss convention. I miss being around people right. and, and those networks. Um, but that, that week, that was definitely something that I will forever remember because it was uh, Christy and Anna and everybody that worked on that just did such an yeah. amazing job of, of capturing um, just, again, it, it was, it was very personal because there's a lot of things I put and that's, that's probably one of the differences in my two social medias on Twitter. Everything's professional. Everything's about the profession where on Facebook, you know, right. you get the inside look at the house and the snake and the crazy songs I do and just the silliness of my, me and my family. And it just really blended all of those things together uh, so beautifully. And then uh, Judy uh, to, to have her vocals and, uh, and do that. It was, it was, it was just amazing and, and so thoughtful. And, and that's something I will, I will always cherish. Like it was pretty cool. And uh, you know, and my kids see me doing some of these things and stuff. They always think I'm silly. So when somebody else does it, they're like, people actually listen to you, dad. Like, <laughs> So yeah, it was, I so appreciate that. And, uh, you know, Missouri shape. And again, it goes back to Tom, uh, um, oh, yeah. and all the leaders. I mean, it's con yeah. leadership is contagious and, and you guys are doing such a phenomenal job of that. And, and as you and I said earlier, that's what this is about, whether you're, whether it's raising the bar within Missouri, whether it's raising the bar for, for other state associations, that's what we, that's what leadership does, right? We're always continuing right. to, to lift each other up, to challenge, to encourage. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give, I'm going to give two quick shout outs in my closing words. One is to Kim Ballard. Uh, yeah. Kim uh, is, is served on the board with me at Shape America, been involved with a number of things in our community, uh, is, is, is in leadership at, at North Carolina Shape right now. Uh, but when Kim was working nationally a number of years ago for Spark. I, I was just a year, maybe less than a year at the Department of Ed. And Kim was coming through and was in Indianapolis. And she said, well, I'm gonna drive down to Louisville. Can you be in Louisville? And I said, well, well, well who are you and what do you do and blah, blah, blah. And, and she's like, I just, I, I just saw something that you, you talked to me the other day at a convention conference we were at. And I just want, I, and we got together. I said, sure, I'll meet with you. And, and, um, and so I was familiar with Spark, obviously, because of the name. Um, and, right. and, but she wasn't trying to sell me anything. She's Kim. I remember this. Kim simply said, I don't know where you're going, but I like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And you let me know at any time, if you need a system of support or a person to help guide you, Kim had had back, previous background at department of ed in North Carolina. And Kim and I have been great friends and colleagues ever since. I so appreciated having that person that said, I believe in you. And that means so right. much. And, uh, and Tom Lowry is the other person that I can say really did that. I was in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, for the American school health conference three years ago when Tom approached me, I was very new as executive director in Kentucky and met him a few times cause I came through state leadership here at Sam events and things. And Tom said, right. I've been talking to some of the other executive directors and we want you to put your name in for president of Shape America, to which I, I said, what? And um, it was Tom's encouragement and his words that, that really was the deciding factor. Um, he, 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 the next day had a letter of recommendation done and ready. 
Um, I, I was able to talk to somebody else there at the event and they were able, cause it was literally like the two days before the deadline. <laughs> and, uh, and so if you think about everything we've just talked about, yeah, you know, there are, everybody plays a role in different ways. And so every relationship matters and whether that's our relationship as teachers to our students and right. who they're going to become, whether that's with our other colleagues, um, you never know the path that somebody's on. Every conversation matters. That teacher that's starting out this year, that that's struggling in the classroom, may be a, the superintendent in 20 years, right? So every you never know the path that somebody's on. Every relationship matters, and just continue to spread good vibes and encouragement. And I so appreciate right. Tom and Kim for for what they've done, and and I, I just so appreciative of everything that's happening in Missouri as a result of that contagious leadership that you all have. Yeah. Wow. Um, you're going to get a chance to hear from Tom next week because that's going to be one of the things I plug. So, Jamie, I want to thank you, but I just want to plug a few things still coming up over the next week. Number one, guys, um, it's tune in today at 3 o'clock because our president uh, here at, at uh, Moshe, uh, Dr. Dennis Docheff, is going one-on-one -on -one with Chris Staley to give you all the latest news and updates from the Moshe Minute, which we're really excited about. Also, Jamie, you can weigh in on this. Uh, this Wednesday at 10 o'clock on Wednesday, June 17th, um, our team is putting on a Health Moves Mind webinar, and I believe it's going to be surrounding the SEL. Is that correct? Oh, you're muted. That That is correct. Uh, sorry, I've got three lively boys at home today. My son has oh. friends over. So, uh, but yes, the, yes, there's a whole series of things that they'll be planning. So this Wednesday coming up is going to be the first of those. And, and as we said, I know in Kentucky, we're taking uh, that information around and, and really preparing Health Moves Minds to be a statewide challenge that we're gonna do here and saying, we wanna make sure that this is taught in every school the first 30 days of back to school. Because as we said earlier, we don't know what that new education norm is gonna be, but we know right. that SEL and Health Moves Minds is a critical component of that. So staying connected to the resources you all have a great team there in Missouri that's going to take that information and run with it, I, I know as well. So uh, good things to come as far as professional development and webinars. Yeah, it, it's obviously it's a free webinar. You guys can register online. Obviously, just check our Twitter, Facebook. Um, it's all out there. And then the last thing I have to ask you, I just, I just got to go there because we know you're Mr. Skin in the Game. And I think you like the story. As you know, that there's these two gals in our state association known as Baker Spot. And in case you didn't know, Megan Baker and Christy Spears both were, um, when they were future professionals, uh, Megan was the president of future professionals. And Christy in 2016 uh, was recognized by Shape America for major of the year. Now they have Baker Spot and we know you love having a skin in the game, so we have to throw out the challenge. We know you're looking to get your third tattoo for Health Moves Minds, but I think what we want to know is what would it take on your other calf to get that <laughs> Spaker Spot logo right there in the belly of that muscle? Well, I, I, I think I issued that challenge back. I can't remember the exact criteria, but I think basically said – uh, if if each of the board members of most shape get it, then I'll I will I will be the next in line after each of those members uh, complete the the Spaker Spot tattoo. But to your point on the third tattoo, yeah, because of COVID, there, we 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 are reopening and changing the criteria a little bit, and uh, uh, details to come. But I have given an okay. alert uh, that uh, it'll probably be a fundraising challenge in September for the state that raises the most. So there, okay. which as soon as I said it, Christy immediately spoke up and said, there's a chance you could come back to Missouri for your third one. I said, that's exactly what I, I didn't say, but that's exactly what that means, Christy. So uh, be on the lookout for, for those details. Um, and, and we're going to focus on that back to school and, and the fundraising component. So uh, that, that, that most likely that's an insider scoop on what it'll look like. Uh, I've only said that publicly to the, uh, the, 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 the state task force of, of Health Moves Minds, each of the task force chairs. Right. So uh, they, they have it stirring around in their heads and we're gonna make that official pretty soon. Um, so so it, who, who knows what the future holds for this third tattoo. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. You there's might be chance. back to Missouri. 
there is a chance. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, guys, we want to thank you guys for tuning in and viewing. Jamie, I just want to personally say thank you. You've meant so much to me in my career, as well as people like Stephanie Morris and certainly Joey, who I certainly work with every two weeks on those strategy calls on behalf of Shape America. I'm so blessed to be able to be part of that. And Jamie, you've been such a big part of our story. I thought it would be great if we could take some time to let people in on actually what's happened during your presidency and how certainly um, the health and physical education community has been impacted by social media. So guys, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. For past president, Jamie Sparks, I am Guy Danhoff. We want to thank you guys for watching the special edition right here on Mo Shape Media. Thank you.